Welcome to Nourish by Spinneys, the podcast which promises to inspire you to eat well and live well. I'm Tiffany Eslick. And I'm Devina Devecha. Welcome to a space where we hope to nourish your heart and your soul. On this show, we chat with leading players in the food community, from farmers to foodies, as well as health and well-being experts. It's all about engaging conversations and fresh ideas. Today, we're attending a baking masterclass with Matthew Jones of Bread Ahead. They're originally a UK bakery that opened up during Expo 2020 and have since opened up in the Mall of Emirates in Dubai. For today's episode, we're back at their Expo location, which is now closed to the public, but continues to serve as their primary kitchen. So we're going to go back and forth between Matthew's masterclass with Tiff and some of his home baking tips and our conversation with him while the bread was proofing and then finishing up in the oven. But first, let's talk about what you're making, Tiff. So today we're baking a focaccia, which I'm planning to top with some fresh rosemary, Spinney's food olive oil and delicious garlic sea salt flakes. Let's get started. Hey Tiff, welcome welcome to Bread Ahead. (laughs) Thank you. Let's make some focaccia. Okay. We've probably got about six recipes in the Bread Ahead kind of staple that are really popular and they just work really well. If you want to do some home baking, these are a really sort of quick and easy one. And if you're new to home baking, this is a great introduction to baking because you kind of get a really good result every time. Mm-hmm. You can do it standing on your head. Okay, um, well, I mean, that's I have never good tried that. But, yeah. Um, yeah, well, why don't we try that today? <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> and it also so, looks like we don't need like a lot of, you know, fancy equipment. No, you to really do don't. Any of this, which I is mean, good as well. literally, you yeah. need a, a couple of plastic bowls, you need some good quality olive oil, you need some strong white flour, mm-hmm. you need your hands, and you need some weighing scales. Literally, it's that simple. Okay. And with those really basic bits, we can make some beautiful focaccia. Okay. You'll never buy focaccia again. You'll just buy the ingredients. So let's start. What we're going to do, first things first, I've got everything weighed out first. And it's always a good idea to get all of your ingredients weighed out so you don't have to, when you start mixing, you don't, you're not looking for things. Yeah. You've got everything on the table in front of you. I wish I was that organized at oh. home, but I'm never. Oh no, <laughs> bakers, you've got to be super organized, yeah. you know, otherwise it just gets real messy. So four ingredients, mm-hmm. we've got strong white flour, we've got salt, we've got yeast, and we've got water mm-hmm. that's just arriving. And then we've also got olive oil. Mm-hmm. We're using a really nice organic olive oil here courtesy of yourself actually thank you very much so pleasure hope you like it <laughs> I've, i was told the secret to good olive oil is just buy expensive olive oil basically yeah that's you can smell it that's real good stuff mm. love it now, where did the inspiration for your recipe come from like did have you has it been years of research for focaccia did gosh so learn about yeah. it Italy first or you know no yeah. nothing as flamboyant as italy actually yeah. the first time i made focaccia in my working life was actually working at babendum when i was mm-hmm. a chef um and that was back in 1992. Okay. When I was a child. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, Are we talking? And I, yeah, and yeah. It, it felt, felt very exotic at the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was my first introduction to it. Okay. And there's a lot of different styles of focaccia, mm-hmm. you know, different regions of Italy. In more North Italy, you get a thicker, sort of a pillowy focaccia. Mm-hmm. The further south you go, thinner, more crunchy. Okay. There's a load of, you know, and everybody yeah. makes the best focaccia. Yeah, I was reading that it's originated in Liguria. They're saying about 2000 years ago. Okay, wow. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know if, yeah, yeah, yeah. if that's fact, but it said, oh, you know. Lovely, um, beautiful. Interesting that it varies, you know, in Italy as well. What is yours like, more pillowy? I, I mean, yeah, a good we, mix? In, in, in the middle, I yeah. mean, probably sort of like, three to four centimeters thick okay but again depending on the size of your tray so obviously if you've got a smaller tray it's yeah. going to be a bit fatter and a bit squatter if you've got a larger tray it's all about personal choice okay. and i think we really do encourage a lot of freedom in baking yeah you know it's yeah. important that everybody you know there's room for people to put their own little personal touch on it yeah i think everyone thinks that they have to follow the scientific rules and that's that and then you well, know but actually, you do with yeah. the recipe yeah you know that's the thing and i think this is the thing that's really interesting with with baking is once you understand the sort of basic formula of recipes mm-hmm. then you can experiment yeah You've got to get the recipe right first yeah you know, the, the the ratios of flour to water to salt to yeast those things have got a they're kind of sacred yeah but then outside of that then you can start to experiment yeah good point yeah just give that a little mix up with your fingertips and I, I think one of the lovely things with baking is taking a moment to feel 
the ingredients. Mm. You know, feeling the texture of the flour. Yeah. And when you just take that little moment, you notice much more than just touching flour. So, for example, now, if I'm feeling that flour, I can feel it's a little bit cool to yeah. the touch. It's humid, so it clumps mm -hmm. as you do that in your hand. And it's just a baker kind of does this stuff instinctually. Yeah. You really get to know ingredients by just touching it. Yeah. And that's a really nice thing to do, especially if you're baking with your children. Just take a moment to really connect with the ingredients. And now we've got the salt in there, for example, mm -hmm. you can feel the little granules of salt yeah. in that. So it's changed the texture of it. Um, I mean, if you want to go deeper into that, you know, you can almost sort of close your eyes and just take a moment to really think about that flour and the texture and the temperature and the environment around you. And you kind of go off in a little world there. And it, that's yeah. a, it's a nice thing to do because the, the more you get to know your ingredients, the better you'll be at baking with them. Yeah, just boom, boom, boom. Yeah, lovely. Okay. Oh, I love that feeling. Yeah. So what we've made here is a 80% hydration dough. Okay. So that means 500 grams of flour, mm -hmm. 400 grams of water. Okay. So one kilo of flour would be 800 water. So 80% yeah. ratio of flour to water. Okay. Um, it's a sticky dough. And is that sort of always, that ratio always used for focaccia or? Yeah, you want 80, 85. 80, so it's okay. pretty sticky. So now that the dough is squared away, Davina and I are going to sit down with Matthew to get to know more about the Bread Ahead story. I mean, I know we've started our masterclass. During it, you said that you were a child when you started baking or that you, you, know, you, you had your first job when you were a child. What do you mean by that? I was a very industrious child and I, I did literally, I was always in the kitchen and my mum was very sort of keen on teaching me to bake from a young age. So I was always making flapjack and rock cakes and brownies and carrot cake. And, you know, it was just how we grew up. We grew up in the kitchen. And did you sort of finish school and then go on to study baking or um, what was your journey? I was a bit of a rebel actually. I left school when I was 15 and I was not an academic. So I left school without any qualifications, but fortunately I knew what I wanted to do. So I was a chef. I left school and I just went, you know, that was my single focus was to work in kitchens and to be a chef. And then I kind of graduated from being a chef or diversified. I was a chef, then a pastry chef, then became a baker. Okay. And who did you work with in those years? Like so, great names? Wow. Well, yeah. I mean, I worked in the Michelin world at the time. So yeah. there was um, Sean Hill at Gidley Park Hotel. There was Simon Hopkinson at Babendum. There was Phil Howard at the Square. It was, you know, that, that sort of in the 90s, really, of London's restaurant scene when, when it was all happening. Okay. Yeah, a lot of movies have been made. Yeah. 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 It was, it was pretty, pretty sort of it was a very new industry, so it was quite um, very raw mm -hmm. as an industry at the time. You know, quite aggressive, very sort of um, very uh, very harsh environment to work in. And how did you end up with Bread Ahead? Yeah, I was a chef, then a baker. I had a bakery business from two thousand nine. Sorry, from nineteen ninety nine to two thousand and ten. So about eleven years. I had a previous business that was Flower Power City, organic bakery. Um, I sold that to an investor. Um, and then I opened Bread Ahead with a sort of new direction and I wanted to teach and I wanted to have retail shops. That was the two main parts of the business. So, and the, the name Bread Ahead was, it was actually found, I was sitting at a table when a friend's who's got a farm in the North of England, and I was sitting at this table thinking of names and I just wrote down the word bread and I just drew a little arrow after it. And it was bread ahead. And that's how the name came about. I still have that piece of paper. That's brilliant. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's not just a, a bakery, is it? There's so much more to a bread ahead as a brand. You know, you've got like your your school side. Like, yeah. on, can you talk a little bit more about that? Do you need to jump up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did we warn us be about this. Right yeah. back after a short break. <laughs> yeah. Half the cutches. Pretty. <laughs> This is the beauty of being live in a bakery. Yes. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and all the smells. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We have a lot of moving parts to the business. So yeah. we have a retail outlet, um, we have a school, so a lot of teaching, and the, the school has really diversified over the years. So we now have about 40 different courses, all sorts of content. So from Japanese baking to um, South American baking, and we've really got a really wide audience. So it's online as well, isn't it? Yes, online yeah. baking has become a big thing for us. 
And then when you're doing, so you said like Japanese baking, for example, have yep. you gone and trained there and become an expert at it? Are you bringing in teachers? We bring in, yeah, yeah we, we had a, a Japanese teacher who worked for us and really we so, sort of led partly by our, by traveling, partly by looking around, partly by our audience, partly, really we listen and we just sort of, but as long as it's based on bread, then I'll bring it into our world. Okay. And why was that education piece something that you wanted to focus on or, or do as part of Bread Ahead? I mean, I think several reasons, really. I mean, in the early days at Borough, well, and actually still now, I like working on the market. We've got a market store, and that's how we started, okay. in Borough Market. And, you know, often you'd be talking to a customer, and they'd be like, well, what is rye bread? What is spelt bread? What's the difference? What that, that? And they, there was definitely this curiosity around baking. There was a lot of questions coming our way. So I thought, well, let's build an environment where we can actually include people in that, an immersive environment inside the bakery where we can teach people to bake properly. And not just teach them to bake, but teach them how to understand the ingredients and understand what's going on and what it means. Do you have a favorite type of bread? or? Um, I mean, just a good brown sourdough, good rye bread. At home, we always have rye bread. You know, that's our go-to, really. So, mm. And your worst? <laughs> uh, worst bread? Um <laughs> I think undercooked bread is probably the worst, isn't yeah, it? I think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's sort of, yeah. Totally yeah, fair. That, that yeah. doesn't work, yeah. And that will happen a lot when first trying out, yeah. uh, when you're first yeah. baking, I think. If people haven't tried to bake bread at home yet and missed that whole bandwagon during COVID, um, what tips do you have for the home baker? Yeah, I mean, it, it's never too late to start. So, you know, just do, do start. And even if it doesn't work out first time, don't give up, you know, because I think a lot of people have, a bad experience in baking at home and they sort of oh no i i can't bake you know it's just not true mm -hmm. i want to dispel that that myth everybody can bake in the same way that everybody can tie their shoelaces or everybody can drive or you know we can all do these things you know it's a it's a very learnable thing to do very achievable that's so true actually i think we get so caught up with thinking oh we need the best equipment and the best mixer and a fantastic oven and i yes it helps to have all those things but mm the basics of baking we can do yeah so, yeah and just don't be scared by it yeah i think i missed that bandwagon when it happened i started yeah. baking but just never did bread oh, so okay hopefully i'll be inspired oh, after yeah. today <laughs> sign up to an online course I could. <laughs> yeah. yeah you'll be fine well yeah. now you've had a master class this yes. afternoon. <laughs> Let's chat a little bit about Bread Ahead and Dubai. Yeah. So it came to us during Expo and the city went crazy for, I mean, everything, particularly the donuts. Um, how do you feel about that journey of coming here and how's it been? Uh, amazing opportunity. I mean, it's really, really incredible, actually, how this is really, it's, it's been life changing for us as a brand, as a, as a London, essentially quite a small London business, really, a family business, myself, and my wife, um, just at the helm of the ship in London. Um, we've got a great team, but relatively small business, you know, with five shops in London. Um, and now we've got this opportunity to have a footprint overseas, well, in Dubai of all places and in the Middle East. So we're also in, in Saudi. Um, but Dubai, amazing. The expo was incredible, gave us huge brand awareness. We didn't know what to expect. And I mean, sitting here right now, that door literally there, I can remember the first day I was upstairs in the bakery getting stuff ready and came downstairs at like 10 o'clock in the morning when we opened on that first day, I opened that door and there was about a hundred people outside wow. waiting. Wow. It was incredible. Yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. I mean, I didn't uh, expect that. Yeah. Like even Ankit, our social media manager, for those of you listening, you know, he just told us before we started recording this, he has fond memories and I quote of standing here for an hour just to get two donuts. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. people went Serious crazy dedication. for it. Yeah, exactly. It was amazing. And yeah. I think, you know, we created the demand because I, I, it was, you know, pop-ups can be very good. And I mean, this was a very serious pop-up, but, um, you know, because people kind of knew it was going to end. Mm. So there was that real excitement about it. And it was, yeah, yeah it was, it was really good fun to do that. What are you seeing now with the store at Mall of Emirates? Um, are donuts still the most popular yeah, product? Yeah, big time. Yeah, donuts, pizza, sourdough bread, um, mm -hmm. pastries, coffee's a big thing. Uh, all of it, to be okay. honest. Yeah. And so with your pizza, can you chat us through that? So is it your, your dough making process? What are you, any sort of tips and tricks? Uh, what are you doing differently? Um, sourdough pizza. I mean, there's quite a lot of bits to that to, to get a good pizza. I mean, I like a big pizza. I like New York. I like New York style baking. You know, they don't mess about. It's big, it's bold, it's in your face. It, it's, you know, 
everything about it is kind of oversized. So I, I really like that style of baking. So we went for a big pizza. We cut it up in pieces, quarters. It's really generous. It's really, it's it's full on as mm. an experience. A lot of very garlicky and tomatoey and cheesy. And so that came about. That's quite a recent addition to the the bread ahead family, as it were, the mm -hmm. pizza. Probably about three years now. Okay. Um, during lockdown yeah yeah just um and again it's a natural we make sourdough so you know the same sourdough that goes to make a one kilo sourdough loaf can be used to make a pizza same thing you okay. know so it's very easy and a very natural extension you need the right oven you need the right temperatures you need a bit of sem semolina you need you know it's those little touches really that make it special yeah. i mean talking about that in terms of ingredients as well you know just watching the master class was great because you know you can see the interaction between really good ingredients do you have i guess non-negotiables when it comes to sourcing these ingredients yeah i mean we well we bring the flour here from the uk so right. we import it um, from the same miller, mm -hmm. which is a pretty big thing. But you can work with any, well, not any flower, but you can work with different flowers. But I, I quite like to be true to the cause of, you know, British wheat, mm. British company. Um, I mean, non-negotiables, I guess, you know, you don't want fun, funny colours. Colours need to be natural, really, with yeah. food. I think that's quite an important thing, you know. Um, and just stick to basics, really. I don't try not to follow fads. You know, there's, you know, there can be cubed shaped croissants are, are currently a thing I, I don't really go there you know i sort of stay away from the fads yeah. for me a croissant is a croissant i like tradition mm -hmm. and just leave it alone you know so we're going to take a quick break from the conversation to go and check on our bread and share an all-important tip for using herbs when you bake you can see lovely bit of air bubble activity in there yes look at that one that's what you want to see okay pick some rosemary Nice. And fresh rosemary as well. Yeah. It's, it's the best, you know. Dried rosemary, I mean, it's okay, but it's not the same. No. Fresh herbs. Ideally straight from the garden. Yeah, from your rosemary, from your rosemary bush, from your garden in Provence. <laughs> yeah, one day. And a, a good little tip for baking. Yeah. It's always good to wash your rosemary before you use it because it can be a bit gritty sometimes. Yeah. But also washing it just before you use it because you'll get... If it's slightly wet, it stays more green when you bake it. Okay, so you get yeah. a more, yeah, it kind of protects it in the oven a little bit. Here's a quick sneak peek. We have another episode that talks a lot more about pizza coming up in a month. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Tiffany Eslick, and you're listening to our Focaccia Masterclass with Matthew Jones from Bread Ahead. During the break, we topped our focaccia with rosemary, olive oil, and garlic sea salt flakes, and it's now in the oven. So back to our chat. So with your focaccia, which you were teaching, teaching me how to make, I know we've spoken a lot about it. Um, are you Have you sort of stuck with that recipe? Is it quite traditional? Um, or have you gone off piece a bit with how you you know what goes into it the focaccia recipe stayed the same since the beginning but we changed it recently and the one we made today is actually like a we call it a lazy focaccia okay because we found that we used to teach focaccia with a lot of kneading and a lot of slapping and a lot of process but to be honest you don't need to do that at all you can just do a lazy focaccia and the results are the same it's amazing we actually discovered that in lockdown bit of a sort of happy accident <laughs> yeah. as it were. um and i know we've made one with rosemary and some lovely garlic salt um what other toppings do you like oh you can go crazy i mean yeah. you can you know uh, again I, I like to sort of stick with the classics bit of sea salt and but if you want some artichoke hearts on there or some black truffle why mm. not you know mm, you nice. can you can really go to town even cream cheese or you know but there is a i think there's a, a, a line a boundary where it almost becomes a pizza so yeah you know, you don't want to go too far. Yeah. No. I really like it. It's like super thinly sliced potato. Mm. Um, yeah, potato's yeah. delicious. Yeah. yeah, carb on carb. It's the best. Yeah. Um, now I'm just getting hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Any other advice on Italian breads? Uh, what about ciabatta? Do you, do you play well, around with that? Yeah, I mean, yeah? we make a ciabatta. I mean, it's interesting, really, because... Ciabatta is a very modern bread in, in the bread world, you know, sort of mid-80s that came to the scene. Um, it's a good bread for home bakers because it's, it's a really good one to explore hydration, high hydration doughs with. So 
you know, you can go up to a 90%. You can do 100% for catcher, equal quantities of flour and water, super wet dough. You know, it's a good one for engagement, you know, with and to get people really studying dough and how far they can push things. I mean, we go for like 85% hydration. It's a good bread, you know, when, when focaccia is made fresh, it's delicious. Lovely open structure, big air bubbles, quite a dark bake, you know, the crust. Yeah, I like it when it's fresh yeah. and made well. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so right now, uh, you know, you've got the Mall of the Emirates store. You mentioned Saudi as well. Um, not just necessarily in the Middle East, but what else is keeping you busy right now? Gosh, what keeps us busy? Um, we've got a very energetic two-year-old son. He keeps us quite busy. Um, who's going to be learning to bake quite soon. Oh, uh, bless. <laughs> I mean, just generally eating, traveling, you know, looking around at what people do. I, I'm very curious by my nature and I always like to see what's going on. You know, but the Middle East Trust is obviously a really, it's a big project. We're working with a local partner from from Saudi um, who have got really big plans, very ambitious family. Um, and that's it's a very exciting opportunity to be involved with them. So it's uh, amazing, really. And when you say like looking around and looking at trends and you mentioned the cube shape croissant, um, in the bread world, what are you seeing at the moment? Are some of the leading trends? You know, there are some really there's some really good baking happening at the moment. Um you know, I saw a lovely thing the other day, this honey toast croissant, which was, a, mm. you know, a, a, a thing. Um, and it really what goes with bread and, you know, just good, simple cooking, mm. you know, good stews, good, good basic food, a good, you know, pan con tomate, if you mm. will, you know, Spanish style. I mean, it's a, you can't go wrong with that stuff. True. That's the sort of food I want, you know, really good, simple, flavorsome, timeless yeah. Um, I think our bread is ready. Oh, um, I can okay. smell it. Well, I think so. Yeah, so yeah. Um, thanks, Matthew. Oven. That was great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, I was going to ask what the no Oh, question. yes, me too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was like, no, stop talking. <laughs> uh, go ahead. <laughs> One last question. <laughs> uh, so we always ask um, this question to all our guests on, on our podcast. Um, so what is it that nourishes your soul? Yeah, God, that's a that's a deep question. It isn't is a deep it? question. Yeah, what well, nourishes my soul? <laughs> We're expecting a super think, deep answer. <laughs> I think the process of baking is, is much deeper than people realise. It's a very important thing to do. If you, in ancient times, the centre of any village or community was a place of worship and a bakery. So to be a baker is a is a pretty profound thing. You know, it's a, it's an honour to be a baker. So for me, the physical repetition of baking is a really important part of my day. It keeps me sane. It gives me a purpose. It gives me a reason. It gives me something to get up for. It's never boring. Every day it's the same, but it's different. So, and I really encourage people to connect with bakery in that way. A bit like gardeners love gardening. Bees love making honey. I'm a, I'm like a bee making honey. I love what I'm doing. That's great. I love that. Oh. I love you know, I'm starting to see some patterns emerge from our nourish question. You mean like how we forget to ask it most of the time? Well, yes, that too. But also how often our guests say that their work or at least some aspects of it is nourishing for them. That's really inspiring, don't you think, that more and more people actually are finding enjoyment from their day-to-day -day jobs? Yeah, definitely. And what happened during this episode worked out really nicely for me. You were busy in the process and I just got to enjoy the spoils. Fresh focaccia with a crunchy, crunchy crust. How does that sound? Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. That's what you want. You want these nice little bubbly bits inside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It makes the most amazing toasted sandwich. If you toast, you grill this with a bit of cheese in it. Fine. That's what you want. That's where you want to be. That's beautiful. And that sort of shininess inside of that. I mean, yeah. you could have, we could have developed that a bit more, a bit more proved. But again, you know, the, the beauty of home baking on a regular basis, because you really need to get to know your own environment, your own oven, your own temperatures, your own, all about it, you know? Because, you know, everybody's home is a bit different. Everybody's oven is a bit different. Yeah. Everybody's flowers, everybody's hand is a bit different. A lot of us have gas ovens here because of okay. we are, our buildings are wired. Right. What is your tip for that? Because it's, I find that- Gas is good. Yeah, it's more humid as a bake. So you'll get a more humid bake. Um, so it's good for, good for bread baking. Yeah. But again, it's just, you know, I think the most important thing is sticking with the same equipment because then you just kind of get to know it. It's like sticking with the same flour. Yeah. Once you get to, know your flour 
you know, then you can work with it and you'll know what to do. Yeah. Oh. Good. Delicious. <laughs> Great. <laughs> there was so much focaccia left over. What did you do with all of yours? I actually went the classic route with it. I dipped the focaccia in olive oil and enjoyed it as a little starter. It was really perfect. How sophisticated. <laughs> I ate half of it on the route to the car out of bread ahead because I got lost. And then I proceeded to drive down Sheikh Zayed Road taking clumps of warm focaccia out the bag and stuff it into my mouth. It was absolutely divine. Sounds like it. This episode was brought to you by Spinneys and is hosted by me, Tiffany Eslick and Davina Deviche. We're produced by Chirag Desai and artwork is by Michelle Clements and Jihan Youssef. You can follow Spinneys on Instagram, Facebook and TikTok for more. And visit us at spinneys.com where you can shop for fresh produce and a variety of local and exclusive products. We'll be back in two weeks with Stasha Tonche from 21 Grams. See you then. Today we're attending a baking masterclass. <laughs> What is happening? Today we are <laughs> today. Like someone from the sound of music. Like <laughs> okay. <laughs> the hills are alive. Oh, can't say. <laughs> this is gonna make it to the blue <laughs> Oh my god, it? don't you dare, Jack. <laughs> um,